Alright, so as you can see, I finally have the complete evolution of chromatometers from 1904 all the way over there up to the end. Um, I think this came out around 1950, and I manufactured that all the way up to um, the end of production for chromatometers. Now, there are a few side branches off of the chromatometer family that I'm not covering today, like the uh, Super Totalizer and the Electric Model K. Um, because although they, you know, were advanced, more advanced than some of their models at the time, they didn't supersede the other models that were available. So this is mainly focused on the evolution of the mainline chromatometers um, from the Model A in 1904 all the way up to the 3D11, which finished out the production of chromatometers. So um, I'll go through each of these one at a time. I'll just give a little overview here. So up there we have the Model A then the Model B, then the Model C, then the Model C Lite, then the Model E. Um, there supposedly was a Model D, although it was only manufactured in around like a hundred of them. So, um, you know, first of all, you never find one. Second of all, as far as I can tell, it didn't really have any new features beyond the Model C. Um, I believe that the current theory among collectors is that um, it was manufactured as a cheaper alternative to the Model D, so that doesn't really fit in with the evolution. Um, so, aside from the fact that you'll never find one, um, it's kind of irrelevant to the evolution of chromatometers anyway. But So, we've got the Model E, then the Model F, and then the Model H. Um, there was no Model G, uh, as far as anyone can tell, so that's the H. Uh, there was no Model I either, that's the J. And then the Model K was electric, that's not here, but then we've got the Model M, uh, in this case is a WM, but same idea basically. I think the only difference between the M and the WM is that the um, M had more steel parts, while the WM had more aluminum parts um, to conserve steel for the war effort, but basically the same you know, mechanism and everything. And then of course, all the way over there, we got the 3D11, which finished out the chromatometers. So, uh, let's take a look at the Model A first. Alright, so starting with the Model A, uh, you can see this one is not in the best of condition, um, but these are pretty rare to find these, so you kind of just have to take what you can get. Um, when I got this, it did not work at all. Um, the register in here was all rusted up, so uh, I took that all apart, basically took the entire register out, um, soaked all the parts in evapor rust, um, Cleaned up pretty well, put it back together, um, and it's mostly working. Let's see if we can add. And get the correct answers. Doesn't always clear out perfectly. Almost did there. There's a one there. There we go, now it cleared out. So still need a little bit of work, but um, miles ahead of where it was when I got it. Um, so as far as the history goes, the Model A was manufactured from 1904 to 1906, and it was the first of the chromatometers to feature a metal case. Um, before the Model A, all the chromatometers were wooden cased, um, and this should have a piece of glass here, uh, which of course is long broken. I did find a remnant of it in the bottom. So it's supposed to have a piece of frosted glass here with just little clear windows around the numbers. Um, so, you know, there was supposed to be something there. Uh, another f interesting feature about the Model A was the first model where you could push two keys at the same time. Um, on the previous wooden box models, you only push one key at a time in each column, otherwise you'd start to lose carries. But with this one, you can push multiple keys at a time, and it still gives accurate results. Uh, so that was a big advancement um, in terms of operator speed because, you know, if you're doing a multiplication or division, now you can just, you know, go right to it um, without having, because if you're doing division, the division and multiplication on these machines are by repeated key presses. So, for example, if you wanted to multiply 625 times 625, uh, we would do 625, of course my 5 is missing here, um, and do it five times, then move over, and then do it two times, 
and move over and then do it six times. There you go, 365 is the correct answer. Now, a trained operator could obviously do a lot faster than that, but you see the speed advantage to being able to push multiple keys at a time. Uh, if you had to push each key individually, you'd have to push, you know, this five times, then this five times, then this five times, and so on for each digit. Um, really not much of a speed advancement in the office, you know. For division and multiplication, maybe you'd almost be better doing it by hand, but once they introduced that feature, that really, you know, made the Contometer a much more useful machine for complex operations. And they published books, uh, how to use the Contometer to do all kinds of operations, you know, from square root, cube root, all sorts of, you know, um, industry specific calculations, all kinds of stuff. So the, they called it the duplex feature, uh, really was a, a big step forward as far as the usefulness of the Contometer was concerned. So. Yeah, first model to feature a duplex and first model to feature the metal case. Um, these are not very common. I don't know how many are still in existence, but um, certainly not easy to find. Uh, so, this they made for two years, 1904 to 1906, and then they moved on to the Model B. Let's see if we can move over here to the Model B. If I can move some of these out of the way. So, as far as differences between the Model A and the Model B, um, you'll see that the register arrangement has changed completely. Um, instead of the register set down low with this big wall here, the register has now moved up to be level with the keyboard. Um, and basically what they did is, um, you can see how there's a little gear here, um, and a little gear on the other side there, I'm not sure what that comes through, but um, basically they added an idle, a shaft of idler gears driven from this gear, and then those idler gears drive the actual register gears, which are now up here in the Model B. Um, so, not a huge change as far as the mechanism is concerned, but definitely a lot nicer to read it up here. And also, that, that allowed them to make the digits somewhat larger, because now they don't have to share space with this ratchet mechanism here. Um, they can take up the full width of the space here, aside from the input teeth uh, to draw the register wheel. So um, that changed. And then in addition, the carry inhibits, which are these little plungers here on the Model A, moved up to be these little tabs here on the Model B. And the decimal pointers, which are these things, this is your decimal pointer here on the Model A, moved up to be these little tabs fold down there on the Model B. Um, and you can see this Model B is in significantly better condition than my Model A. Um, the keys are incredibly nice. The surface finish is, it's not perfect. Uh, um, these were copper plated and then brown lacquered. Um, and I think most of the brown lacquer is worn off this one and went down to the copper, but still, miles ahead from this with its rust plaques and everything, but anyway, so the Model B was manufactured from 1906 to 1909, um, so longer one than the Model A, and really the only changes are what you just see here, mostly cosmetic changes. The mechanism, as far as I can tell, is the same. Um, oh, that's something else I forgot to mention on the Model A. Also, the first model to feature this handle clearing. The wood box models had a much more complicated clearing mechanism involving a knob and a little lever down there, and you had to push the lever and then t spin the knob until all the wheels started turning, and then once they all started turning, release the lever and then turn the knob until they all reach zero. So that's much more um, annoying and time consuming than just flicking the lever back and forth like you can on the Model A. Um, yeah, so the clearing mechanism is the same between these. The operation is the same, they just uh, raised the register up here and then extended these carry inhibit tabs to be up higher. Um, so, like I said, operation is the same. We can just do, you know, um, clear out, same idea. Um, 
So yeah, most of the cosmetic changes, um, not really, you know, mechanism changes. Um, so yeah, Model B, manufactured 1906 to 1909. And then in 1909, I should have organized these a better before starting the video. 1909, we came out with the Model C, which um, looks pretty much the same as the Model B. Um, However, the clearing mechanism took a got an enhancement here, and also there was a not really a visible enhancement um, to the carry propagation. You wouldn't notice it during normal operation, but there were certain situations on the models A and the model B where, if for some reason you held down a key in one column or continued to operate keys in another column, it would build up uh, too much stress on certain parts of the uh, carry mechanism. Um, and that was alleviated in the Model C. Um, so it's not something you would notice by using it, but more of a, I guess you could say a longevity improvement. Um, so yeah, the main feature here is the clearing mechanism. So if you remember on the Model B, clearing is like this, sort of loud. On the Model C, much quieter. Um, on the Models A and the Model B, the clearing mechanism works basically by bouncing the, because there's big long levers that run the length of the machine that drive the digit wheels. Basically the clearing works by bouncing those up and down to get all of the wheels to nine, except for this one goes to all the way down to 10. And then um, when this one gets to 10, because it goes all the way around, then the carry propagates all the way across and clears it out. Um, this one, however, works by um, driving the wheels. See, it, dr it still drives them, but it drives them in a different way so that it's not bouncing the levers like that, which, which is what causes so much noise in the uh, Model B and Model A. But anyway, this was made from uh, 1909 to 1911, and operation is the same. that up. Yeah, I hit the wrong number there, but anyway, you get the idea. For this out, uh, carrying hammers are the same, dust one points are the same. Basically just the, um, is it the clearing enhancement and the non-visible, and that one sometimes doesn't always clear out. Come on, there we go. So, not perfect, but you know, it's over 100 years old, so you can only expect so much. Um, something else that I forgot to mention, and on the Model A, you can see that they color-coded the digits here so that the white wheels are under the white columns and the green wheels are under the black columns. However, for some reason, in the Model B and C, they lost that, so all the digits are white. And yes, I had to repaint some of these because they were falling apart, but even here you can see all the digits are white. Those are perfectly original. Now, when we go to the uh, Model C Lite, I'm not sure well it comes through, but uh, they went back to the color coding, so the digits under the white columns are white, and under the black columns they're yellow. Um, and there's not much enhancement here. Um, lighter, slightly lighter key press, um, but other than that, basically used the same. They also added more oil holes. Um, that pretty much changed in every model. Um, different models have different oil hole arrangements for some reason. Um, but, so, again, not a huge difference cosmetically, um, just a slightly lighter key press. That's why they call it the C light instead of giving it a new model name, because it really is the same model, they just, I guess, lighten the springs or whatever. Um, this one is supposed to be the same color as the other ones, it's just, you know, pretty bad cosmetic shape. Uh, you can see all the chrome fell off of these. Yeah, this is made from uh, 1911 to 1913, and another enhancement, I guess you call it enhancement, is they changed from the composition, or whatever type of material that is, key tops there, which it, it looks like sort of a grainy type of plastic, um, but you can see they don't hold up real well. They're, they seem to rub off pretty easily. Um, the Model B is the best one, but even that, you can see some of the keys are worn off in the model A, they're kind of yellowed and some of them have worn off, but 
here they changed to um, celluloid. So um, if they can tell the, the difference between the keycaps here and on the Model C. But again, same operation. So, and same frame mechanism. So, yeah, um, this machine looks really bad, but operationally it's basically perfect. Um, always clears out, always works fine. Um, kind of interesting. Um, it seems to me that, I don't know if you can see this, they have this like, extra plate under the keycaps. I'm thinking that this machine was used so hard that the key holes in the top plate got so worn out they had to add this extra plate to put the Mac in tolerance. Um, so definitely, I'm, that's my theory anyway. This is definitely a heavy used machine, but like I said, it works perfectly. Um, so yeah, the model C-Lite, uh, 1911 to 1913. In 1913, we move over to the Model E. Um, and this is a significant change from the Model C-Lite. This added the control key mechanism and also added these fat finger guards. So, um, if you wanted to use it, you know, if you're using it normally, it works the same as the Model C. However, this has the first sort of error correction, which basically means that, so if I go to the Model C and say I'm distracted and I only push the 9 key halfway down, well now I got a 6 there. So even though I pushed the 9 key because I didn't push it all the way down, my answer is going to be wrong. So to rectify that, in the Model E, they added the control key mechanism. So what happens now, if I push the 9 key halfway down, you'll notice that nothing changes here. And, well, we're supposed to lock the keyboard. So the keyboard is locked. Now these two columns are free. We're supposed to lock on the first one, so that's uh, something that's not 100% correct there, but you get the idea. Um, the keyboard now is locked except for these two columns. So I know that I can go back here and correct it. So I think this one I pushed to 6, so I'll rectify that. This one I pushed to 9, so I'll rectify that. Now I've got my correct answer. These are still locked, so I'll reset. And now everything's unlocked again. Let's try that again. This should have tripped. Yeah, now that time it did. Maybe I loaded up too slowly and didn't quite trip, but. So the idea being that if I push this halfway down, everything else locks, I know my error is in this column. All I have to do is remember what number I was supposed to enter in this column, go back and enter it, flex my error, reset, and continue on my day. Um, so that was a, a big enhancement, um, you know, because the nine key, the, the keys in the back here, you have to push them down a significant distance. So um, if you're going at speed, it's very easy to make that mistake and not push it all the way down. But this will help you and correct you if you've done that. And this also has these funny little guards here for fat fingering. So if for some reason you would to try and push down two keys at the same time like that, you'll see it locks them and you can't do it. Um, I don't know how useful that was. Um, you know, these were operated touch typing, so maybe it's easy to go like that, I guess. I don't know. Um, you'll see in the Model F that that's, this feature didn't last very long. Oh, sorry, I just tripped it again because I pushed it I went down too far. Um, yeah, see, and it doesn't always work right, so it locked to this one, but allowed this one to go, and then tripped the control key. But yeah, so main enhancements here are the control key and the fat finger guards. Um, Operationally, it's the same. And when the control key mechanism trips, I don't think you can see it in the camera, there's a little white button back here that you push to reset it. Um, so yeah, this is the Model E, manufactured 1913 to 1915. And main enhancements here are the um, operator error detection and prevention of the control key and the fat finger blocks. So let's move over to the Model F. So the Model F is a successor to the Model E, manufactured from 1915 to, I believe, 1920. Um, and 
main enhancements here are the um, decimal points changed from the little um, plain tabs to these little numbered, slightly fancier tabs. Um, but they also got rid of the fat finger guards here, so you can now push down two of cards if you want to. Um, I'm thinking the reason for that is it was just, you know, I don't think it was much use to begin with. Um, I don't think that was really that big of a problem. And also it added a lot of parts because you had, you know, all those extra parts per key sim to implement that. So um, that didn't last very long. Um, anyway, so that's the main changes here. Um, just the fancier adjustment points and the removal of the um, fat finger guards. But the control key is still there. So if I push this halfway down, you'll see it trips that. Everything else locks. I can go back and correct it and then push my release and should be able to push my release. Release is not. Maybe that's a little bit sticky. Um, anyway, basic idea, similar idea. Uh, of course, this one's the handle is broken off, which is pretty common. Um, pretty lucky that this is the only machine that I have that's like that. Um, especially when you shift these, it's pretty easy for these to get bent over or break off entirely. This one I think was broken off before even you know um, before it was shipped or anything. So anyway, um, yeah, not much, not too much changes here. Just the removal of the fat finger guard and the fancy adjustment pointers, but basically same idea. Yeah, this Model F manufactured uh, 1915 to 1920. Yeah, this is the Model H compiler. This is manufactured from uh, 1920 to 1926. Um, and this added some more error detection, error correction features. Um, so the what this corrects is operators mistakenly starting the next operation without the machine being cleared. So if you take a look down here at the register, you can see that all of the zeros are slightly misaligned with the holes. And that is a visual indicator that the machine has been cleared and is ready for the next calculation to begin. Now, as soon as I push a key, you'll notice that one thing, a bell ring is telling me that the machine was clear when I started. And also all the zeros now line up with the holes, which is an indicator that the machine has a number in it, which down here you can see is six. Um, so that are those are visual and audio clues to the operator that the machine is either clear or not clear, and when they push a number, whether the machine was clear when they started. Um, another main advancement here is the clearing mechanism. Um, this is the first real change since the Model C light. Uh, you can see that now the handle is sticking straight up. And to clear, all you do is push it forward like that, and it clears right out. So a big change there, and actually the idea being that you can keep your fingers on the keyboard and just use your pinky to clear it out, um, which was definitely not possible with the uh, previous clearing, because you had to take this handle and go all the way back and all the way forward. Um, if you flip this back, you wouldn't really even be able to reach it from the keyboard. So. Um, uh, with a speed and an ease of use improvement there. And this is a lot lighter too than the uh, previous one. So again, same principle. And of course, this also has the uh, control key mechanism still. Um, forgot to mention the Model F. The Model F is supposed to have a red button as opposed to the Model E's white button and all of the succeeding models have the red button, um, which I'm not sure if you can see is back here. A little red button there for control key reset. So if I push this halfway down, see that it does not enter. Everything else locks. I can go back and correct it and then reset and continue. So that's the Model H. Um, I said manufactured from uh, 1920 to 1926. So let's move on to the Model J. And the Model J was manufactured from 1926 all the way up to 1939. 
So definitely a long one for this model. Um, not sure why they didn't, you know, come up with any improvements or enhancements during that time. Um, could be because they introduced um, several separate models during that time. Uh, one being the Super Totalizer, which is basically a Model J with an extra register in the front. And then you can transfer, you know, intermediate results from this main accumulator to that extra register. You know, if you um, want to keep like a running total or something in between calculations, but um, you want to do like some partial sums, but then have a total sum at the end. Um, so that's basically just an enhanced Model J. Um, and then they also introduced the Model K, which is an electric one. Um, and the idea being there that instead of the key, when you push the key, instead of that driving the register, um, when you push the key, that activates a trip, and then the electric motor drives the register. So just for like a lighter key touch. Um, not sure if it really improved your speed that much because um, you, know, you still have to take the time to push the key. So, but you know, those were two uh, separate models and they're not included here because one, I don't have them. And two, because they didn't really supersede the Model J. They were just kind of, you know, separate lines that were manufactured at the same time. Um, so this is mainly following the uh, main pumpometer line and I'm viewing those as sort of separate auxiliary lines. But anyway, the main difference between the Model J and the Model H is really just cosmetic. Um, they changed the key colors, but the mechanism uh, really, as far as I can tell, is the same between the two of them. Um, still have the uh, audio visual clues, so the zeros are slightly misaligned and they all jump into place. Um, yeah, still have the nice fancy clearing, uh, still have the control key mechanism. So yeah, that's the Model J. Um, like I said, not much difference, just Misty Cosmetics, um, 1926 to 1939. Let's move on to the model WM or, or M or WM with the same model, just a slightly different uh, materials used to construction. Uh, this was ma manufactured from 1936, I believe, up to 1950, I think is when this one ended. Um, big cosmetic changes here. These are some of the biggest cosmetic changes, you know, since the um, end of the wood box models. Um, you know, from the Model A up to the Model J, the basic shape of the case stayed the same. Um, the key plate top was basically the same. You know, they just changed the register. Well, I forgot to mention that too, in the Model H, they, they had to extend the front of the case a little bit. Um, so this little tongue here is slightly bigger in the Model H and the Model J to account for um, those enhanced uh, audio visual clues about clearing. Um, yeah, this is a, a significant change. Like I said, the biggest change since the end of the Woodbox models. Um, operationally, though, it's basically the same. Um, you know, you still got your, oh, uh, actually, it's not the same. Uh, if you notice, these windows are very blank. Um, you really can't see much of anything in them. And the reason is because this added leading zero suppression. So as soon as I push a key, notice it dings. And, well, this one slightly sticky. You can see one, two, three there. Now, if I continue my operations, and hopefully this won't cause a problem for us, but. Um, something that doesn't come quite right here. This machine does have some issues. It's not perfect. Oh, maybe. So now you can see the zero here is more visible than the zeros here. And that's because this machine has leading zero suppression. So if I push something, say over here, you'll notice, bink, all the zeros pop up uh, trailing that but the leading zeros do not pop up and do not fill in or whatever you want to call it. 
Um, and if you clear it out, of course, it hides all the zeros again until you push a key. And then all the zeros behind that key are not visible, but the zeros ahead of it are not. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, if you had some, some large number, you know, all the way over here, um, and you're just glancing down here, you might not notice there's a number all the way out here, you know, if this is just a sea of zeros. For example, if you take a look at that on the Model J, if I push something here, now just glancing at this, you might think, oh, it's empty because there's, you know, there's only one number and it's all the way out here and you might not see it. Um, this is the idea anyway. So, you know, here versus here, you know, there's much clearer that yes, there's something in the register and it only goes out this far. Um, there's definitely a little cool enhancement. Um, you know, like I said, this came out in 1939, so by that time, you know, IBM was really advancing with their tabulators, so not sure how much, you know, this would have um, really provided business value to users, um, you know, if they were starting to think about switching to IBM tabulators instead of Rosa Comptometer users, but anyway, um, of course, the clearing mechanism is, handle is different. The mechanism is pretty similar, but the handle is slightly different. Uh, still got the control key clear button up here, and these carry inhibit tabs have now got little plastic knobs on them, um, and mostly cosmetic. I still got the fold out dust no pointers there, but yeah, so that is the Model M or WM. This actually says WMA on it, not sure what the A stands for, but yeah, uh, mostly cosmetic changes here, and of course, the cool thing is zero suppression. Um, so yeah, this was 1939, I believe, up to 1950. So in 1950, Comptometer came out with the final model um, that they would produce, or the final manual model anyway. Uh, they'd also introduce a few different um, electric models um, in this case style. Um, yeah, this is the 3D11, and I believe this was made from 1950 all the way up to the end, somewhere around 61 or 62, I believe. Um, Mainly cosmetic differences here. Uh, you can see the decimal pointers are now down here, and they, when you flip them, they make a little white dot appear where you would expect the decimal point to be. Um, unlike the previous models, where the decimal point falls down from the top, um, it's actually you know, kind of where you'd naturally expect it to be. Like when you write it out, you put it down there at the bottom. But so that changed. Um, the control key, which used to be this, has now moved down here. And they also added this latch down switch here. And the idea behind that is when you're doing multiplication and division, um, if you trip the control key mechanism, you can correct it. And then the control key mecha mechanism automatically resets. And you can continue. So when you're doing multiplication and division, you can just correct and then you don't have to push this. You can just continue with the operation um, when this is latched down. Um, they also changed the key style here. Um, so some of these I think are loose, so I can probably pull one off and show you. There we go. Uh, so these keys on the previous models, all the way back to the well, all the way back you know, to the Model A, were solid uh, molded keycaps. But these ones are double shot molded, and you can see how it's like a little structure in there, which over time deforms and cracks and um, there's quite a few keys on here that are loose and ready to fall off, and you can see some of them already have got lost. Um, but, uh, as far as operation goes, pretty much the same. Um, this one, the digits are actually somewhat larger, so let's we'll see if we can do a side-by-side -side comparison there. So if I do, and that was not supposed to chip all the way out there, so that's a problem, but our cosmetic one is still going to get accurate results. Zero, that is correct. I'm not sure why this shipped all the way out to there. It's not supposed to. Yeah, it's getting somewhat better. So it wants to be somewhat sticky. You see now it's kind of correcting. Um, I'm not sure why it's shipping out to there, but anyway. Um, yeah, use-wise, pretty much the same. The only real difference is this auto reset for multiplication division. Um, so like I was saying, if I push a number here, say two, 
and I'll push a number here, say three. I'm not sure what comes across camera, but this two is much larger than this three. Um, so again, that would improve uh, readability. Um, I think I forgot to mention, it also happened somewhere else too. I think in the Model H, they also increased the size of the digits a little bit. Um, I forgot to mention that, but yeah, these are, I hope that comes across the camera, these are definitely larger than these here. But yeah, I think that's going to be about it. Um, and like I said, this, you know, took Contalbinder all the way up to the end where they stopped manufacturing them. Um, I like to also do a comparison between the Model A and the Woodbox model, but unfortunately I don't have a Woodbox model and those are pretty hard to get. So um, I figured that once I got this complete lineup, I would do this video showing the uh, evolution. And if I ever get a Woodbox model, then we'll do a comparison with that too. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this side-by-side uh, -side comparison of all the compositors from the Model A all the way up to the end with the Model 3D11. Um, I wonder how many people actually have all, all the models, but anyway, I'll enjoy this video, and thank you for watching.